you know, I never made a movie. And I want to make a real movie one day, but right now I don't have the time, the money, a cast, a crew, none of that. Not even the that good of a camera, the one I'm using right now. But hard work and effort should help me one day get there. And it's not going to be easy or simple, but so many people dream of making it in the industry and becoming a well-known name. Maybe your first movie isn't what you want it to be, but it's a start. And while it's tough, not everyone makes it, you could. Despite what errors thinkers say, the dream could happen. <sighs> well, if what I say has, matters at all, it's that despite how I feel about this movie, I still want Miko Winbush to have a chance because, I'll be honest, I thought this movie was bad. So, for those who don't know, and I presume most people, since I think like others, like me, first heard about this movie just from the opening of Max on Thursday, and seeing this for the first time since it practically had no advertisement, and the only advertisement that you might get for this movie was a show that wasn't really advertised at all. Project Greenlight, A New Generation. I can't really review this movie since the whole reason for this movie to have any significance is the show. But I would have to explain what the show is as well. And honestly, that's what I need to make a point about to make sure what I have to say might matter. If, if I didn't know about the behind the scenes stuff of the, this movie, maybe that will play a part in how I review this movie. Maybe. But, well, I'm sure that I probably have been a bit generous with my thoughts for other movies in the past considering how trouble it is to get made or done with a lower budget since I know it's never easy to make a movie but if I truly want to judge this movie in a vacuum as its own thing I should review it like that I will talk about the behind the scenes stuff later I have to but with that said what is this movie about? Directed by Mika Wimbush and written by Philip Gallet Gallet? Ah crap! Okay so years ago when I did movie reviews on Instagram I reviewed a movie called The Spine of Night which the director of Philip Gallat who is most well known for his work on Love, Death and Robots thanked me through email for reviewing the movie since it gave it the exposure, uh, I, it was some exposure I guess and sent me a signed poster after I asked for it since he said do you want any merchandise for this so thanks to him you know that was honestly a big moment for me to realize I am capable of being a good film critic because even if I gave that movie a somehow time and he said despite my criticisms, he was thankful. And that taught me more than anything. I don't need to hide or be biased about my opinions or reviewing skills if that kind of thing can happen. Granted, that was still a positive review and I'm not going to pretend this movie was good. I think it's a bad movie. Great Matter is about Aurora, played by Mia Isaac, as she and her mother, Isla, played by Jessica Francis, have to live on the run and hiding since they have psychic abilities. They call it something else in the movies, just psychic abilities as usual. You know, not the fortune teller kind, just a sort of, uh, what is it, uh, right, you levitate things off the ground, or, you know, you read people's minds, that kind of thing. Anyways, though Aurora is still young and needs more time to master them, her mother dismisses her from any chance of a normal life, which Aurora seeks more than anything. When she sneaks out one night to have that chance, everything goes wrong, and she comes face to face with a man named Derek, played by Garrett Dillhunt, who takes her to a place that will change how she thinks about anything, from herself to trusting her own mother, who might have some skeletons in the closet. I don't hate the premise, but the problem is, this is such a generic premise. I mean, a low-budget thrill where a parent and child are on the run because of their powers, like Firestarter or Freaks in 2018. But again, if I had to judge this movie on its own, what did I think? I think... It's a boring movie with many plot holes and one-dimensional characters. Mia Isaac and Jessica Francis give the best performances they can, but this is a mediocre script, not helped out by the execution at all. Aurora wants a normal life, but I don't know what else she wants. Maybe give her a hobby, you know, the aspiring artist or something. Something to be like, okay, she wants a normal life, but I don't really know anything else about her other than that. She's kind of uh, dull. I don't know. And the mother's secrets don't make sense when it's like, they are secrets that anything telling her would get Aurora to want to follow her more since the movie's about Aurora discovering... I feel like, do I pronounce it Aurora right? Aurora? Aurora? Whatever. Right. Aurora discovering how dangerous the world is for psychics or whatever, you know, term they use in this movie when really I don't fully understand the powers. Sure, there's the basic stuff, like I said, levitating objects, reading minds, but it's very inconsistent how they use them. Like, the mother saying she always reads her th daughter's thoughts since Aurora has a master blocking them, but somehow she's unable to tell when she runs away, or another scene where she does multiple power moves at once where she's in completely different location when she projects herself to distract the bad guy. Most of all, okay, so I did see this in the behind the scenes. Uh, I'll get this later, but so the teleporting is added to the list of powers, which I'm not against the idea, but again, as I saw the behind the scenes, you know, saying how come they can't just use this power, you know, even with the workarounds that should have been written out since that does make this whole movie still a bit pointless. Like, okay, so Aurora can't teleport. That's fine. But when her mother knows when, you know, she 
figures out where she's being held. It shouldn't be that hard to just teleport in and save her. Honestly, if they run it out, and okay, I can't say this, I don't know how I can do, explain this without spoilers, but there's this sub for the bad guy in this movie to do something hypocritical, and I thought, oh, okay, they're going to defeat him by doing this to him, like, you know, you reap what you sow. And let's just say what they do instead, honestly, if anything, kind of proves his point more so, so I don't really know what it was going for. But yeah, the movie script isn't the only problem, it's the lack of direction. So, there's this show called Project Greenlight, A New Generation, which is about finding upcoming directors, and I thought the idea was a showcase, since the first episode is about finding several directors who have to, you know, do a sh have a shot to work on this movie, and when they are given the assignment to prove themselves to make this movie, they had their own version of the turning point scene, the one after she runs away, there's like this big scene that like, you know, is what makes the movie, because, okay, it's, a, it's just, it's not shown in fully at all where it's like as an audience we know what each scene looks like together if anything we're just watching the people who you know decide to react to it like i like i feel like i'd rather see what they're capable of so it's like me as a viewer would be like oh okay i, I like her style more but you know it's not it's not showing fully of the director's work and it's just a behind the scenes stuff of how this movie got made which i would have loved to show like that to show me you know how a real movie gets made and all like sure that's something i would love to watch but i didn't want that to impact how i viewed the movie especially how one bad movie shouldn't be define your career because you know unfortunately the movie is dull and the cinematography isn't ambitious at all particularly the scene where aurora is trapped in a sitcom but unlike something like wandavision or kevin could go f himself it doesn't make it look like a sitcom the movie script and dull execution make it a bore and it had nothing interesting to stay on its own in any way despite the good performances i don't think this is a good script and if i had to improve it maybe have it be about a ghetto community of psychics instead you know i think that would, instead of being on the run they're like ghetto together in this community of psychics where it's like you know, or wants to escape, but discovers a dark of her powers that's like, well, would these people be behind me? Because, you know, they're suppressing us, but they do have a point because in the wrong hands, or really if any of us go off the wall, we're dangerous people that could, that could do harm to so many innocent people by accident. It's like, that's your movie. But, you know, uh, that's not what happened. But, you know, uh, what else do I have to say? Oh, yeah. You know, this movie didn't have the most money, and honestly, while I said one bad movie shouldn't define your career, Miko wouldn't be who i choose to direct if I had to say. So, based on the first episode of Project Greenlight, directors like Malachi or Nicole Maya would have been my choice, and honestly, convinced me that this wasn't a movie that was made out of passion, but just to make a movie that, without Project Greenlight, we have nothing going for it on its own. I think the movie is boring, generic, real plot holes, and is dull and is aesthetic throughout that shots that should be scary are in. It's hor not horrendous. Like, it's not like, if I had to sit through this again, it'd be, Ugh. It's just more like, I'm bored. And the performances keep it afloat, so I'll say that, but it's far from good or even mediocre. I think this movie is bad, and I wish the best for the cast and crew to look back at this one day and see how far they come, but nothing else. And if you like the movie, I can see why, but this is something that, okay, without the vacuum, I've seen done better so many times before, and even done worse, but at least more interesting. So with that being said, I give Grey Matter a 4 out of 10.